Hi, I'm John Waterhouse. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Asheville Summer Prosperity Class Series online. Uh, it's July, it's time for us to do this good work. And uh, so Barbara has selected some highlighted sections of the best prosperity classes we've had over the past few years to share with you. We're sure you'll find some value in this and we know that you'll find some prosperity in it as well. Also remember to fill out the information sheet so you can be included in our treatments and print out the treatment for increased income uh, and recite that as many times each day as you can. This is about having fun and it's about being prosperous. So enjoy the video and uh, we're gonna send you one of these every, uh, um, or a link to it uh, every Monday and uh, you can follow right along with us. We hope you're having a very prosperous uh, summer and that that continues to grow in your life and all around you. All the best, enjoy and be prosperous. Welcome, welcome yeah. to 2019 Summer Prosperity Series, Our oh, Summer like to Prosper. Yeah. 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 We have done this class, this is our 25th Prosperity yeah. Class. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we always start in treatment, so take a deep breath, let it out, breathe it again. And what I know is that God is all that there is. There is an infinite presence of substance and supply. There is prosperity, abundance, and blessings that creates all out of itself by becoming that which it creates. The very essence of all form is prosperity and abundance. And I know that each of us is created out of that substance and supply of spirit. We are prosperous, abundant beings right here and right now. It is our very nature. It is the spiritual essence of us. And so right here and right now, we open to accepting more and more and more yes. prosperity and abundance, money, blessings of all kinds into our lives right here and right now. We say yes to life. Yes. We open to it. We accept it. And we live the blessed life that we were always meant to live. We do it together as Summer Prosperity Series Center for Spiritual Living Asheville. We do it inside of ourselves. We do it with each other. And we have such a good time. Yes. And when we have gratitude and thanksgiving, I release this into all that God is, knowing that God is all us. Together we say, <laughs> and so it is. Come on in. Are you looking for seats? Okay, we got seats over here. So, usually, or in the past, we had started the Silver Prosperity class off with a specific kind of event. We're not doing that this year, but I want to kind of bring you up to speed in what this class is all about. How many people have attended Prosperity Class at Center for Spiritual Living Asheville? Wonderful. Throw out into the room what it meant to you or what you got. Money. Connection. Money. Abundance. Love. Abundance. Prosperity. Prosperity. Karen. A new job. A new job. Belief. Freedom. Freedom. A Belief. A home. We create. We are creative beings. And one of the fundamental tenets of this teaching is that through our thought, through our word, and through our actions, we manifest the very molecules of our life. And so when we focus on something, and I know that one is all and all is one, but boy, when we start cooking together, it's as if we lift each other up. When we focus on something, we're going to demonstrate it. And so you got 24 previous classes, whether it was in a trailer, whether it was here, we have demonstrated such amazing things at this unexpected income, then it moved to increased income. Now I'm going to extreme income. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We have demonstrated so many things in this particular class. We have one of our members is named Barbara Updike. And through this summer prosperity class, she realized through the goals and the purpose that she wanted to live in Japan. And at that time, that was ridiculous. She couldn't move to Japan. And gosh, where has she been for the last five or six years? Japan. Living in Japan. <laughs> We've had people have houses given to them. We have people who have had cars given to them. We have had members of this class who have had more than one car given to them. 
just flat out given to them. We've had people have money that has shown up from audits on hospital bills, audits on IRS payments. We've had people who have had debts that they had long crossed off come up out of the blue and pay. We've had people find money. We've had people literally have money fall from the sky. Not dollars. They were $100 bills and $50 bills. Not even 20s. They were hundreds and 50s falling from the sky on I-95. Everybody screeched over and jumped out of their cars and were running around grabbing these bills. There was no overpass. There was no helicopter. There was no earthly reason why this money should have fallen from the sky, but it did. Money can show up in your bank account, in your mailbox, in your hand, or literally dropping out of the sky. And when you get your focus clear, you can create anything. So what's the difference between creating a, a, a diagnosis of cancer that vanishes into thin air or creating $100,000 that manifests from thin air. Nothing. There's no difference in that. When we get together and focus on money showing up out of the blue, we create money showing up out of the blue. And one of the reasons that I love this class, this isn't the end of our academic year, this is the beginning of our academic year because I will teach you how to have money show up in your hand. And when you go, well, I've done this treatment for increased income, and I've got increased income in my hand, what that does for me is it develops faith. It develops trust. It develops a sense that the universe is right here. And as I open to it, things show up. So that when we need money, we have money. But when we need something that may not be able to be purchased by money, like a physical healing, like a healed heart, like a connection with someone, like an opportunity that opens up, when we, when we focus on, we've created that with our money that I can hold and I can count it. I can say, look, at, I did this. I hold it in my hand, I count it, I can spend it, I can play with it. Then when things are a little bit more nebulous, we can go to that place inside of us and know that we can create that in our lives. That we're not at the effect of the world, the world is at the effect of our thought and we are in control of our thought. So. We are going to use something that we have used for decades. It started off being called the Unexpected Income Program, and then, true to form, students would come up to me and go, well, how can we call it the Unexpected Income Program if I'm expecting it? So fine. So we changed it to the Increased Income Program. I don't care what you call it. The words are a tool to get you where you want to go. Where you want to go is to say yes to life. Say yes to life. Say yes to life. Whatever is happening, say yes to it. Open up to it. Claim that there's a blessing in it. Accept it and then take it. Don't be afraid to take what is yours. When one of our students, one of our members was walking down Monfort one night and saw a brown wadded up bag under a bush and she opened it up and found hundreds of dollars in cash she didn't stop to wonder if she was good enough to accept that. She <laughs> should accept that. She took the money and ran. <laughs> and she said, that's my unexpected income. That's my increased income. When one of our members had an aunt pass and they gave her the house, she didn't say, well, what about all of the other nieces and nephews? Maybe they should have the house. No, she said yes. She accepted it. She took it. When one of our members didn't have any transportation and somebody said, here's a car, it was a pretty nice car too. They didn't wonder if maybe somebody else should have it. Everybody's got their own stuff. You've got your stuff. And if it's showing up in your hand, if it's showing up in your life, it's for you. And you taking the good in life doesn't take anything away from anybody else. For that matter, at the level of energy and creation and consciousness, it only grows more abundance, more prosperity, more acceptance for good in all the world and the universe. So the more that you prosper, the more you lift other people up around you. It's so different from a world that says, I, there's only one and if I take it, you don't get it. No, 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 no. In the world of abundance and prosperity, if I take it, more is created and you can have yours too. So it's really important that we keep an eye on our thought process, 
on our ability to check out our self-worth, to listen to some of the, the thoughts that may be going on, the words that may be coming out, and if it's in any way limiting or negative, to stop that. And to say, no, I'm going to accept my good. I'm going to prosper. I'm going to thrive. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be wealthy. I am going to live the good life that I was always meant to live. I'm going to have that. That's your job for the next <coughs> seven weeks. Because I will guarantee you, you will create money in this class. My job is not to decide how much money you will create. That's your job. Your job is to accept that income, that, that money, and we're talking about money, that money that is showing up in your life. We can reach out into the thin air and grab money. We can. We can just reach out and grab it, and then we hold it in our hands, and there is no denying that we did that. We did that, and we got it. And then it's our job to play with it and not to get all, oh, I should be. So I want to go over this with you. You can open it up. Here's how it works. On the next panel is your treatment for increased income. Begin and end each day by reading it aloud, and you will set universal law into motion to receive your increased income. Now this is the bare minimum, beginning and ending the day. I expect you to have this memorized by next week. It's not long. It's two paragraphs. Do it enough that you've memorized it so that when you come into class next week, you don't have to read it from the piece of your brochure. Some people choose to do this a hundred times a day. Some people have done it a thousand times a day. If you want to do it a thousand times a day or even a hundred times a day, I suggest you go to Dick's Sporting Good and then get a counter. And you click it. Every time you do it, you click it, you click it, you click it, and it tells you how many times you've done it. I get confused on 100 days of gratitude. I don't know what day I want. <laughs> so if you want to do that, that, in my opinion, will be the best use of your thought time in your life for the next seven weeks. You don't need to watch TV. You don't need to listen to gossip. You don't need to do these other things. What you need to do is train your thought to demonstrate money. And you can do that. People have done this. Thousands and thousands of people have come through our <coughs> prosperity class at Center for Spiritual Living, at Center for Creative Living when we were there. Thousands of people have done this and demonstrated large amounts of money. So, Every, everyone in the program will work daily for all who wish to participate. Together, we will create wonderful demonstrations of our faith. To be included in this prosperity program, submit the form entitled, Put Me on the List. That's the far panel. Put me on the list. You'll Put me on the list. Let's jump over to that one. I want my name included in the treatments for increased income. I will share the increase that comes to me in the form of a 10% tithe off the top as a gift to Center for Spiritual Living Asheville. I will teach you how to tithe in this class. People who tithe hold on to that because they are setting spiritual law in motion. They know that it works. They know that they create increased amounts of money by putting money out. Now, there are other people who don't know that yet. That's okay. That's why you're a student in this class to learn. So I don't want to freak you out or chase you away. So we are starting with the increased money, the money that you weren't going to get if you weren't in this class. You wouldn't have had it, so it's no skin off your nose. The increased money, your agreement is to tithe 10% of that. Now, if we have another lottery winner in this class, which we had, came in with a giant check and brought over a tithe. If we have another lottery winner, your agreement is to tithe 10% on that. If you find a dime on the sidewalk, your agreement is to tithe 10% on that. Whether it's a dime or whether it's a million dollars is not me, it's you. So I recommend you practice saying yes and opening up and accepting all of the good that life has for you because the universe doesn't know the difference between a dime and a million dollars. 
That's all coming at you, and it's the, the, the size of your doorway of consciousness that allows the amount to come in. The amount is in the relative, the supply is on the infinite, and it's your job to open up that doorway and to accept as much of the good that you can that life has for you. I understand that increased income means income received over and above any current normal income. So if you work on commission, and your commission is the same this month as it was last month, that's not increase. But if your commission is double what it was last month, that's your increase. And those of you who already tithe, you're gonna tithe on all of it anyway because you understand the power of the law that you are setting in motion. Tithing is a spiritual practice. It is a spiritual practice. The law of increase is a spiritual, uh, a spiritual principle. So whatever it is you put out, you're going to get back increased. It's going to expand, it's going to grow. And the way that we keep that flowing, just like the old pump in the, the field, is you keep it primed. And the more you prime it, the more water comes out. And if you let it go dry, then you gotta go find big borrow steel, a bucket of water from somebody else who's all primed up, and prime it up and get it going again. So you want to continue to do this, keep setting that law in motion. I don't care if it's a penny. I want you up here with your story, and we celebrate. And when you come up front, you come up with your tithe, unless you've already tithed, because there is a group of people in this center whose motto is, never let the sun go down on a tithe. And that's what PayPal is for. So if you've already tithed it, great, come up. Say you've already tithed it, give your story so that you will lift us. We lift each other, we get all excited because a thought plus a feeling equals an action. And we wanna really put the feeling into this so that we are opening up, setting spiritual law in motion and accepting all of the good from life. If you wanna do this and you don't have to, you do not have to prosper and thrive here. You can simply sit back and watch others do it. And if you want to, you're gonna put your signature your name, your address, your email, and your phone number on this. The signature is the most important. When you sign your name, you are making a statement. You are making a commitment. It's not casual when you sign something. So by putting your signature on this, you are committing to doing your treatment at least twice a day. I would recommend 100 times a day, 500 times a day. Go for it. Do it a 1,000. Just do it once. Watch how good you feel. And for the increase, you're committing to tie 10%. Why I want you to do that is so that you will learn. People who know the power of tithing never would stop. Never would stop. And we have had some people who tithe and then they stop and then they end up in my office and go, oh, I well, would be so hard, I'm so so hard. Well, what's happening? Are you tithing? No. Well, I can't help you. I've taught you to tithe. You tithe and you stop. Everything fell apart. That's all the effect of your cause. If you allow fear to get in the way, you're going to create fear in your life and you're going to lose what you've got. It's like the parable of the talents that I never got to do last class. <laughs> <laughs> Even that which you have shall be taken away. It's all in our picture of your consciousness. It's not some outside power that's punishing you. It's that cause equals effect. And so what we do is we keep the law, keep setting the law in motion with our thoughts, with our words, and with our actions, and we come together and lift each other up. It's a very, very powerful program. Very powerful. I just want to read the Law of Giving and Receiving by Ernest Holmes before we go a little crazy with our treatment. Everything in nature moves in circles. What goes out must come back. Unless the seed is sown, it cannot bear fruit. There must be a planting time for every harvest. Those who give all, receive all. Those who refuse to give, limit the possibility of the greater good returning to them. This is your planting time. Love and you will be loved. Extend <coughs> joy and you will become more joyful. The ancient Talmud says, God will doubly guide the already guided. And Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. 
You do not give because God needs the gift, but because the giving increases, broadens, and deepens the life of the giver. Nor shall we give from the standpoint of duty. The universe refuses to bargain with us. It already has given us everything it has, but it, ha it also has provided that the gift of life can be received in its fullness only as it flows through us to the fullness of others. How wonderful is this exact balance which God and nature keep. How perfect it is the law of good and how glorious the opportunity to join with the infinite giver in the givingness of the self to the joy of life. So this is your planting time. If you put it out, I guarantee you, it's going to come back. And it will come back bigger because we live in an expanding universe. The universe is not shrinking, it's expanding. And everything that is coming into physical form expands. And so you give something out and you get more back. You can see it with hugs, with smiles, with opportunity, with time. Any of you not have any time, start giving your time away. and Watch how it creates more time in your life. This is the way life works. So as we learn to give, as we learn to think, as we learn to speak, as we learn to get excited, then we create in our lives. <coughs> the way that the class is going to be structured is that we will open up with this treatment for increased income. These are demonstrations that have occurred without the class even starting. This is bringing into race consciousness this idea that we can increase our income just by hearing the announcement or the, the um, email or whatever that the prosperity class is going to start, things start to happen in our lives. Now can you imagine if you go from that pretty passive, pretty passive <coughs> conversation in your head to something much more active? Can you imagine if you take that energy of creation and instead of just la 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 go no i know that this is true that this is going to happen i'm creating this i can feel the energy moving through me i know that the molecules of form are manifesting as money and opportunity in my life right now can you imagine what will happen in your life so i want to invite you to go for it in this class and the way that we practice going for it is by repeating our treatment for increased income together aloud. So my question to you is, are you ready? Yes! Are you ready to have what you want to have? Yes! Are you ready to go where you want to go? Yes! Are you ready to do what you want to do? Yes! Are you ready to be who you are meant to be? Yes!
This is what I want you to think for the next seven weeks. As you turn in your sheet that says put me on the list, I want you to know that John or John and I or I will be holding that stack of forms. Now, it's not quite like, put your hands on the bed of it, but there is something to that. That that energy of holding those, of treating on them every day, of everyone coming together and treating for themselves and each other, it lifts us. And I have seen so many miracles happen through this class. We've had people have physical healings. We've had people who could heal relationships with children that they have not spoken to for years and years. We have had people change their past. We have had people have their entire futures shift. Because when you change your thought, you change your life. And when you think something and energize it, then you supercharge it. So don't be all mamby pamby you know, oh, okay. ah, God is the source of those. <laughs> Get into it. Let people think you're nuts. Come up and down in your kitchen. Celebrate it. And watch all, all of the things that happen. You go out to the mailbox and you bless that mailbox before you open it up. If you get a letter from the bank, you treat over that letter that goes from a charge to a credit. If somebody calls you, know that only good comes from this, that this is a blessing, that this is a manifestation of money in your life right now, and you, every single last person here, will demonstrate money. And, and what happens is you go, oh, that made perfect sense. Of course that happened. Of course it happened after you thought it. Until you thought it, it hadn't happened yet. Even if it had to start happening, in the 40s, however long that is, years ago, 80 years ago. The past changes because of what you think in the present moment. And so if you continue to think thoughts of limitation and fear, you will create limitation and fear. But if you can get yourself to make that jump, and not to care if people think you're nuts, to do your treatment driving down the road, to do your treatment at work, to do your treatment doing the dishes, to do your treatment all the time, you will forge new pathways in your brain that are pathways of abundance and prosperity and blessings. And those must manifest. The more you open up, the bigger your demonstrations. Honest to God, we had somebody win the North Carolina lottery in this class. And you can have whatever you can accept and say yes to. I know. Because I came into this teaching stone cold broke, homeless, had a three-year-old child, and had no clue what I was doing. That's what it took for me to leave my old life and be dropped into Eugene, Oregon, and to open up to these new ideas. So I'm sleeping on the floor, the living room floor of someone. My son is sleeping on the couch. There's not room for two of us on that couch. I'm on the floor. And somebody walked through, and I was in the middle of the floor, you know, crawled out. <laughs> and they nudged me with their foot. They didn't kick me, they nudged me to like move over or something. And said, we're going to church, do you want to come? And for me, it took losing everything to lose my hold on the way I thought life was. To lose my investment in the old Barbara. The old Barbara was not a happy camper. <clears throat> but it took me losing everything to be able to be open to change and grow. And my first teacher, <coughs> Bill Tolliver, in this little tiny place, sanctuary was no bigger than this room, the little tiny place in Eugene, Oregon, told me that if I could change my thought, I could have anything that I wanted, and I wanted a lot. I wanted a lot, I didn't have anything, but I wanted a lot. And I didn't have any resistance because I didn't have anything to hold on to. I had let go of everything. A uh, person I had come out to be with in Oregon had died. Uh, another one had been in the same car wreck that, we, that I was in and gone to the hospital and had gone back to, to Florida because that was a crazy place to be. And I had no people, I had no money, I had no car, I had no um, job, I had no future. But that meant that I had a future that I could create. 
because there was nothing set in stone for me. There was nothing to hold on to, nothing to defend, nothing to try to, to be, because I had lost everything. One of the first things that I learned was about tithing. That's why it is my intention to teach everybody how to tithe, how to practice the spiritual act of setting spiritual law in motion through the act of tithing. Because when we give money out, we set spiritual law in motion, but more than that, it scares the pants off of us. I'm not stupid. We had one person here who kept prospering and prospering and prospering, and she said, boy, you'd think it would get easier, but every time the check gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it makes me more and more nervous. But I know that's crazy, because I'd much rather give out a, a, a check in the thousands than a check in the hundreds, because I've got that much more money. But still, the psychological process of it is, I'm not sure how I can make it on 100%. How in the world am I going to make it on 90 what are you, nuts? Yeah. <laughs> because we don't live in the logical realm. We are spiritual beings living in a spiritual universe governed by spiritual law. We are beings of light. We are beings of love. We are beings of energy. And we twinkle in and out of form. That's just basic particle wave quantum physics stuff. This is not solid. This is flipping from a particle to a wave, which is form, solid, energy, solid, energy, solid, energy. And so us individually, we are flipping from form to energy, form to energy, form to energy. I think that's why some people can see auras, because that's the energy body. Our bank account is flipping from form to energy, to form to energy, to form to energy. So what is it that allows that to change? Or what is it that holds that in place? If our bank account is manifesting our fear, our worry, then being afraid and worrying will keep it locked in the limiting amount that is there now. We have got to shift that and open up to a greater possibility. And then, in literally a nanosecond, there's more money because it goes from form into energy, energy expands, and then it plops back into form, collapses into form is the new quantum buzz phrase, <clears throat> and there's more of it, just like that. That's why instantaneous healings can happen. That's why something can look one way and then all of a sudden it's another way. Your contract's gonna fall through and then it comes together. That's all about the energy of our thought. So when I learned how to tithe, I had 35 cents to my name. I had a three-year-old, I didn't have any place to live, I didn't have a job, I didn't have, they even lost my luggage flying out to Oregon, I didn't have clothes, I didn't have anything. And this idea that I could do something to change my circumstances was so compelling to me that I took the whole 35 cents and I put it in that basket. My teacher told me, if you don't think you can afford to tithe, you can't afford not to because it is our fear of thinking we can't afford to tithe that keeps us locked into having a limited amount of money that says, well, you can't afford to do it. And we go backwards and smaller and more constrictive and more afraid. So there comes a point in time when we have to bust out of that. And I think, I mean, I'm sure there are other techniques, Tony Robbins, firewalks, all this stuff, but I, honest to God, tithing will get it in your face. You write out that 10% tithe check, and I encourage you to write it out sooner rather than later. Don't wait to see if you have any money left over, because if you wait for that, your consciousness will create no money left over so that you can prove to yourself that you can't tithe. I don't want to change. I don't want to change. I want to change. I want to change. I don't want to change. I don't want to change. I want to change. I want to change. So at some point, we've got to be willing to let go of the I don't want to change and risk <coughs> changing. When I learned how to tithe, I had, for the first time in my life, a sense that I had control over my money. And I owned businesses. I owned a photo processing lab in Central Florida. I married what I thought was a wealthy man. And as soon as I married him, he got poor. Because <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I had had money, but I had had no control over it. 
And so when I started to tithe, I got this sense that I could do something, and it, it shows up. I started tithing, and I started getting money. And keep in mind, I didn't have a job. I didn't have any place to live. I didn't, there's no reason for me to get money. And I would tithe 10%. Yeah, the 35 cents is why we celebrate the penny. Because it's not the amount of money, it's the fact that you created that. You manifested that out of thin air. You did that. And so I would tithe 10% and I would get some money. And it was the most amazing thing. It changed me. It changed me more than learning spiritual mind treatment, more than reading the Science of Mind textbook, more than anything else I've ever done on my spiritual path. Tithing changed me. Because I knew that I could challenge my fear and I could go forward anyway. It's not like all of a sudden I felt good about it. I didn't feel good about it. I thought it was the most stupid thing I had ever done, except I have some money now. So maybe there is something going on here. And allowing myself to move through my fear and to establish dominion over money <coughs> was the most transformational thing I've ever had happen to me. And I want to give that to you. Those of you who tithe, you know you tithe. You're not going to stop tithing. This is your lifeline to always having more money. Those of you who don't, I want to offer this. Don't let your fear keep you in bondage to lack and limitation. Don't not celebrate the 40 cents. Celebrate it all. Because if I could stand here and just go, you would go, wow. You wouldn't care if it was a penny or a dollar or a hundred dollars, you would go, wow. And I want to tell you that is exactly what you are doing. Each and every one of you can come in next week and say, I did this. I did this. And I'm working on my consciousness. We're going to give you lessons for the whole class on how to expand your consciousness and grow your ability to receive and demonstrate more and more. But once you find that you can do this, and no, it wasn't random. This was a demonstration of consciousness. This was an effect of you as cause to your life. Once you realize that you can do this, then all it is is about growing it. Once you get the pump started, you don't go, oh, well, it's not a full stream yet. It's just a little bit. You go, oh, yeah, yeah, here it comes. It's coming up. It's coming up. I used to have horses. It's coming up. It's coming up. I can feel it. I can feel the pressure coming. It's squirting out a little bit. It's here. It's here. It's here. That's the exact response to have as soon as you create something in your life. This is it. It's coming. I can feel it. I can see it. I know it's here. And you don't give up on it. You don't go and just squirt it a little bit. I guess I'm not going to do it. You get all active, don't you? Anybody ever pump one of those pumps? Yes. You start working it, boy. What are you doing? I'm pumping my good. My prosperity is flowing. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to do my treatment over and over and over again because I can see it. I can hold it in my hand. I can have it. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I know. I know how to create money. And I can teach you how to create money. Some people don't like it. Some people don't want to be part of the prosperity church. And that's okay. That's your right. You don't have to. But you know, I've been dirt poor. And I've been wealthy. And wealthy is better. <laughs> wealthy is better. You can't change the world if you're too busy being poor. And you don't help anybody by being poor. It doesn't serve you. It's beneath you. You have come to prosper. Jesus said, I have come that, they, that you may have life and, and have it more abundantly. <coughs> you have come here to prosper. You have come here not to be limited in your ability to live, but to live fully. You know, the, the, the sunrise doesn't say, well, yesterday we had all the color. I guess we'll be great today. I guess we'll just hold back. No. No. And if you haven't noticed springtime in the mountains, life bursts forth. If there's any plant that is not bursting, it's sick and dying. They don't stop and say, well, I had plant, you know, I had flowers last year. No, they go for it. That's our nature is to go for it. And part of it is self-worth. When we don't have a lot of value on the outside, we don't have a lot of value on the inside, so we want to look at ourselves and value ourselves more. Part of it is self-worth. Part of it is those, uh, are those 
Phrases that may have been fed to us when we were too young to know the difference. Don't take the last cookie. You're too big for your britches. Don't be big. It's like women have a lot of that. Don't be big. No, man, be big. Use your outdoor voice inside. Be big. Take it. Accept it. Go for it. Live your life as the amazing spiritual being that you were meant to live. <clears throat> I said yesterday, or the day before, the, the week before, days, weeks. <laughs> hmm? No, it was yesterday. <laughs> In May, we had 114,000 pages opened on our website. I don't have the June statistics yet. But in May, 114,000 in one month. <clears throat> Now, is that 114,000 people? Probably not, but it's a lot. It's a lot. And we couldn't have that if we were playing the poor game. We wouldn't have a $35,000 camera system. We wouldn't have the equipment to create product, to put it out on our website. We wouldn't be able to pay for the website, the webmasters, all of that stuff. If we were playing poor, we wouldn't be able to do that. You do not, Marianne Williamson. <laughs> you do not serve anybody by playing small. So we have to break through that aura of smallness, that shell that said, don't be noticed, don't be out there, don't be big, don't do this. My goodness, somebody may notice you, don't do that. We have to bust out of that and say, do it. This is yours to do. You didn't come here to play small. You came here to change the world. We are changing the world. And one of the ways that we have the structure and the support to change the world is that we believe that we can create money out of thin air. Yes. 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 So I'm teaching you to tithe. I'm teaching you to raise your self-worth. I'm teaching you to value yourself. And I would love to teach you to play. <laughs> Life is not a punishment. Life is not a test. You already won the prize. Wherever game we played, the prize was being able to jump into some kind of a body on planet Earth and to live. To look at color. To feel texture. To taste the tastes. To do what is yours to do. To climb the mountain, to swim in the ocean, to get in the creek. Whatever it is for you to do, whatever feeds you, that's your job to do. And you have to do it. You have to do it to be true to yourself. You have to be in joy. What is it? Does it tear it sharp down? said joy, joy is the, the something, presence of God, proof of the presence of God. That was a terrible. <laughs> Joy is the truth of God. To, 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 to. Yeah, paraphrase that. So as you create money, learn to use it for yourself. Not all of it. Pay your credit cards down. Pay your bills on time. Be grateful that you've got money. Do not ever curse your bills. Gosh, just, just turn off the electricity for a couple of days and see how much you want to pay that power bill. <laughs> pay, that bill. <laughs> pay your bills with love. Know that you always have more than enough. And as you do that, you open up to more and more and more. i got to tell you, life is so much better when you've got lots of money. Life is so much better when you feel good about yourself. Life is so much better when you control your circumstances instead of letting your circumstances control you. Life is so much better when you've got enough to give to someone instead of, oh, I'd really like to help you out, but man, I don't have anything anyway. Well, whose fault is that? That's yours. Because you didn't learn how to think, you didn't learn how to create, and you didn't learn how to live. So over the next seven weeks, we are going to do that. And we are going to do it by saying that treatment for increased income over and over and over and over again until we're saying it in our sleep and that's a real thing. <clears throat> you do that mm -hmm. to allow our subjective mind to subjectify it into these ideas. I 
This isn't about somebody else, this is about me. I, Barbara, I know, I don't hope, I don't wish, that God is the source of all supply because whatever God is, God is the source of everything. And that money, 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 is God in action. It's the action and the flow of spirit in my life. Money isn't a bad thing. Money, they never said that money is the root of all evil. It was the love of money. The obsession of money is the root of separation, which is all that evil is. If you think your good only comes from money, then you're going to be separated. But money comes from you. Money comes from you. That money is God in action. <clears throat> I know that my good is here when? Now. now. It's not coming down the road. It's not working on it. It's not going to be here. Ram Dass, be here now. If it's not here now, it is never going to be here. No, my good is here now. I am so rich. <laughs> rich. Rich. Those people. Those rich people. That's you. That's you. I am so rich and so full that I have an abundance of money to spare and to share today and always. I know that true 